In the late 1940s, scale models were all wood. Then they began to change. This is the oldest scale model kit I have in my collection. It's obviously pre-World War II. Someone has started it so you can't really see what it truly looked like as a new kit. But you can see that it is extremely basic in its, in its materials. And you can also see that it's tiny compared to current models and would have been very difficult for small hands to produce or work on. Solid scale models of this era ranged from this level of simplicity as just shown to this Strombecker DC-6, for instance, that has nearly fully formed wooden parts and mated joints such that the location such as dihedral is actually comes out right. This is a typical Strombecker model of the era. It's all wood, shaped to nearly finished dimensions. Since it's solid and made only of wood, glazing is done by decals. The attachment in the, of the wing is such that the dihedral and the angle is set. set. Similarly, the tail you round this part out and it fits into this hole. This makes a much stronger than joint than a butt joint and the angle be correct. In general, solid models had to have glazing represented by decals, paint, or stick-ons, and no interior detail was possible. Flying scale models of wood sheet, stick, and tissue had more chances for interior and glazing. They offered possibility of interior detail, and but had no clear canopy to show it off. This Avenger kit by Comet, you can see that the glazing of the greenhouse canopy is actually paper cutout, and as such would be opaque. In this same time frame, some kit manufacturers realized that you could make clear plastic canopies, particularly bubble canopies, by vacuforming clear plastic sheet. This is a lot cheaper than injection molding and required minimal tooling. So this Gillow P47 has your classic vacuformed bubble canopy. Wasn't long before every model retrofitted to a vacuformed clear canopy. Well, now that you had a clear canopy and you look through it, what did you see? Well, you either saw the carved surface of the model or you saw a void. Gillow's model provided a hole underneath the canopy, so you look down into the cavity of the fuselage since it was a built-up model. Dynamodel Products made a line of single site solid wood kits that featured great detail. Their solution to the what do you see under the canopy problem was provided by a highly detailed cockpit under the canopy. To do this, they provided a cutout in the fuselage of the aircraft as, as it was presented to you, and some wooden sheet that you fitted into that cutout to provide the sides of the cockpit, and the interior was formed in, the, in that manner. Well, what did you fit inside there to make it detailed? Well, they had a great plan for that, too. They had this little box full of beautiful metal castings. Amongst the castings were a seat. armor plate, instrument panel and rudder pedals, and there's a control, control stick here somewhere. While they were at it, they provided similar cast metal details for the entire airplane, resulting in a very detailed model compared to the best wood models that were made only of wood. Monogram pro models produced three lines of kits that featured this cast detail parts approach. 
but in die cast plastic. The first line were flying model kits called Speedy Built kits. This is a P-47 Thunderbolt kit. They started out with only cowls and propellers cast in plastic and sheet plastic windshield, but they quickly added parts and details until this one of the most detailed of kits came out. This kit featured, as you can see, the radial engine, the scale propellers, lots of rockets, landing gear, other smaller details, guns. Monogram super kits were solid wood display kits of single engine fighters. They featured a lot of die cast plastic parts. Obviously this one started has the cowl and the radial engine uh, and the detail plastic parts, including the propellers, uh, rockets, guns, wheels. Monogram made four World War II era bomber kits using speedy belt construction, but they were not intended to be flying models and major parts of the airframe are made of plastic. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show. Meanwhile, Strombecker kits were slowly morphing from all wood to all plastic. This VTO, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, was about half wood and half plastic. The first plastic kit I ever built that was all plastic was not an aircraft kit, but a car kit. Revell Highway Pioneers appeared in the early 50s. Revell was one of the first companies to appear that made all plastic kits. Apparently they actually were made by Growlin and Growlin and marketed by Rebel, the Highway Pioneers. They were small old time car kits with little detail compared to today's kits, but they were vastly better than could be done with wood, wire, and paper with a little plastic thrown in. And any kid could build one. I thought they were great. I could make a model for my grandpa who had actually owned a Maxwell. Somewhere in the late 50s, I'd guess, scale display models were all plastic. Wood producers switched to plastic, moved to other fields, or just faded away. Dynamodel products left the model aircraft modeling market completely and became a major supplier of model train scenery using their metal casting techniques. Gillows and Comets stayed in the flying scale business but did little with plastic. After Monogram's kits had morphed completely from wood to plastic, they embraced plastic models in a big way and began became one of the main suppliers of them. This Grumman F3F, well actually, it's a civilian version of the F3F, but I painted it as an F3F because I like that better. It's a good example of the model with a nod toward the fact that most modelers were kids. Built per the instructions, if you turn the prop, the gear went up and down. I, I did not include that feature because when it sat on the ground, the, the gear had slop in it and it didn't look right. So my gear is down and, and glued. The journey of wood to plastic scale models is pretty much complete here. From this all balsa wood Bearcat made from Dyna model products plans to this testi, Tester's Adolari uh, scale plastic model of the same scale. Wood models faded from the scene. What happened to scale model building after that is quite amazing and, and beyond my skill in this video to tell. In extreme summary, plastic model companies proliferated quickly. They grew, merged, failed, bought each other up, and for the next 60 plus years, rivaling the antics of airlines and aerospace companies in corporate name changing, I have shown only a few of the kits companies and don't have any of the kits of some of the major ones. After some time, they bought, sold, and traded individual molds and equipment so that one model may have been released by multiple companies. Here's Strombecker's 
Martin China Clipper re-released by Glencoe. Here's Revell's Highway Pioneers re-released by Minicraft. If you are interested in this history, I suggest the YouTube videos by Max Models. He is trying to tell the history of all kit makers and doing a good job of it. Thanks for watching.